Welcome to Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder. I'm Joy Mahone, and in this May edition, we are getting ready for summer. And I think you will be pleasantly surprised to find out how easy it actually is to make your own custom swimwear. And yes, you can do that on your conventional sewing machine or a serger if you have one. Now, these lessons are gonna translate not only from swimwear, but to athletic wear, exercise clothing, and even things like lingerie. So pay attention, grab some four-way stretch fabric, check out nancysnotions.com if you wanna use the fabrics you see in these videos, and let's get started. Fabrics and notions featured in this lesson include the Sharon One Piece Swimsuit Pattern. It features a scoop neck with a low rounded back. It is fully lined with an additional shelf lining. Now, if you're looking for a variation to your swimsuit design, make sure you check out our creative swimwear design in our 101 tutorials. You are going to want one half inch wide elastic that is suitable for your swimwear. Make sure you are using a very sharp pair of shears for accurate cutting. The recommended pins are the magic pins extra long. Make sure you're using stretch pins or ballpoint needles and use thread that is suitable for stretch. Threads featured in this lesson include the Seracore overlock thread, the Seraflex, which is the stretch thread specifically designed for stretch fabrics to be used in a conventional sewing machine. And of course, you have the Metrazine all-purpose thread as well. Make sure you pick out your favorite fashion swimwear fabric, all available over on nancysnotions.com. The machine you will need to create your own swimwear includes either a conventional sewing machine or a serger or you can use them together, but not at the same time. You can make an entire swimsuit from beginning to end using a regular sewing machine with a zigzag stitch. A serger, however, was really designed to be used with stretch fabric. So if you have a serger, it is recommended that that is the machine you use to do the majority of the assembly of this design. And then you will finish off the elastic with the zigzag stitch on your conventional machine. If you don't have a serger, this beautiful vibrant is available over on nancysnotions.com and is affordable in the machine that I am featuring in our lesson today. It sews beautifully. Now, if you are using an overlock serger to sew this pattern, make sure that you are not cutting off more than the seam allowance included in your pattern. You can use the serger to join seams and sew elastics. However, you will need a conventional machine, as mentioned, to zigzag stitch down the elastic. Now, if your serger has a cover stitch feature, then you can use the cover stitch and sew the entire swimsuit completely on your serger. There is a Nancy's Notions 101 tutorial video all about knits and the formula used to create garments using a conventional machine. Just remember, make a stitch sample. Make sure you're using a stretch thread such as the Seraflex, which is on our sewing machine here. Use a stretch needle and a stretch stitch, which might be a lightning stitch, a zigzag stitch, or another one, reference your machine's manual for the stitches recommended for sewing stretch fabric. Take a swatch of fabric, sew a sample until you get the right tension and the right settings that will create a beautiful garment. Now, unlike woven fabrics, when you sew stretch fabrics with a regular straight stitch, the seam will break. If you are using a standard sewing machine to sew this pattern, use a stretch stitch to join the seams, such as the mentioned zigzag stitch. For elastics, use a medium width zigzag on a short stitch length. And for finishing elastics, such as around the neckline, arm opening, and the featured leg opening, use a medium zigzag stitch. Again, a ballpoint needle is highly recommended and make sure you just test, test, test your fabric and your settings before you begin and you will have great results. The pattern pieces featured in this lesson include piece one, two, and three. It's pretty simple. The swimsuit front, back, and the bra shelf. Now make sure you pay attention to all markings on your pattern as the swimsuit front is cut on the fold. 
And since we are using a swimwear fabric, which is a four way high degree of stretch fabric, the most stretch will go around the body. Make sure you use sharp shears for accurate cutting and transfer all markings, which will include predominantly darts in this design to your fabric as a reference. Now this is a PDF pattern. We have featured PDF patterns alongside conventional patterns in our wardrobe builder series. So you should be familiar with how to use those. And as mentioned, if you need some ideas on how to sew knit fabrics, reference those 101 wardrobe builder tutorial videos. Well, the last thing revolving the pattern includes what size do you make your swimwear? Measure your bust, waist, and hips. These are your basic measurements and you're gonna go to the size chart in your pattern and pick out the size that corresponds. For tips on how to make your pattern larger or smaller and how to do creative design, make sure you check out our 101 creative swimwear design tutorial as well. Well, we've gone through our tools and notions. We've gone through our conventional machine, our serger, our pattern pieces. We are ready to head over to the cutting and sewing table and get started. I think you're gonna really enjoy sewing your own swimwear. The first step is to take the center back seam of the lining and of the fashion fabric and stitch that center back seam. Now you'll notice that I have put a couple of the extra long magic pins in our fabric. Now pins never go through the serger, but the great thing is that these extra long pins, really you only need a couple and it just helps to anchor your pattern piece together. I like to sew the lining pieces first so that if I have any problems, I'm gonna encounter that before my fashion fabric. So let's run this through the serger. We are using a quarter of an inch seam and I'm gonna remove my pin before I serge. We'll cut that off and you will see just a beautiful four thread stitch that's nice and durable and it's gonna be a great seam for our swimwear. Let's repeat on our fashion fabric. And the feed dogs on our serger will naturally pull the fabric through. If you are using a conventional sewing machine, then you would use a zigzag stitch at this point. All right, well, we are gonna open these up and the next thing we are gonna do is place the wrong sides together and we are gonna baste all the way around the back pieces. I'm going to baste all the way around the pattern pieces joining the lining to the fashion fabric. I think this is the longest step as far as time wise in the pattern is going all the way around the pattern piece, but that will hold these together so we can then treat them as if they are a single piece moving forward. The great thing about the lining is it just stabilizes your fabric that much further, provides a little more durability in your swimwear, and it will help it last even longer.
next step is to pin the right side to the back at the crotch seam, which is this really short distance. Uh, it's the crotch seam, basically. And again, you want to make sure that you put right sides together. Now, we've got a beautiful pattern on our fabric, so it's very would be very easy to uh, flip this upside down or in the wrong area. But what we're going to do is we are going to line up, and I'm going to flip this over this short distance on the crotch area and we're going to again right sides together so the the side that's going to be visible and i'm going to grab a pin usually on most patterns in this area you are going to need to stretch just a little bit um, pulling that front section so make sure that you stretch that you can put a couple pins in there to anchor it and then that way, when you go into the serger or your sewing machine, that they are lining up correctly. One little tip is if you're new to using a serger or swimwear, go ahead and zigzag across with your conventional machine. Otherwise, you can jump right to your serger and serge right across the crotch seam. As you're going to place your fabric into the serger, you can lift up the front of your serger and use that kind of as an anchor. Um, the presser foot will hold your fabric. And so now we can stitch right across the bottom of that. Trim off our excess and that will have made the crotch seam. All right, the next step in your pattern is really easy, but if you read it backwards, it might not make sense. So the next step we want to do is we want to attach the front lining piece to the back lining piece with right sides together because at this point, there's no lining on the front piece, which you can see here. All right, and the idea is that we're gonna enclose the crotch seam in the lining layers, thus preventing an uncomfortable ridge in the fabric. So we have our front piece here. Same thing, we're gonna do a little bit of stretching here and we're gonna line this pattern piece up, put a couple pins in there. And the pins really are just act like extra hands, hold it together. You can hand base this together or run through your conventional machine, um, put, even put a straight a line of straight stitch in there, some basting stitches close to the edge if you're using a serger because that's going to be trimmed right off. All right, we're going to take this to the serger and we're going to stitch right across there. coming together nicely. The next thing, since we have encased the crotch seam within the lining, the next thing we wanna do is now baste around and attach the front lining to the front swimsuit. So I'm gonna put a few pins in here and I'm just using the serger to go around the edge, anchor them together, and then we'll be able to move on to our next step, which is the bra insert.
the next step is to affix the elastic to the bra shelf. Now, your pattern guide will have you measure a specific length of elastic, but I have an elastic tip for you because I do a lot of these in uh, the lower part of the briefs and also the bra shelves in dancewear and swimwear. I will cut a piece of elastic a couple inches longer on either side. And what that will do is it will give me a tail that I can hold on to as I'm stitching the elastic. Now, our instructions will have have us place the elastic on the top of the wrong side of the bra shelf. Now, my elastic is just a little bit more narrow than what the pattern calls for, um, which I kind of like. This is a, a roll of elastic that I use in my studio. And then um, what I can do is just trim off a little excess uh, on the link. So depending on what type of elastic you're using, if you have something a little more narrow, you can use it. Just remove a, a scant amount from the bottom edge of your pattern. But as you'll see here, I've got a tail. Let's hold that up here. So we've got a tail of elastic. I'm gonna put that through the machine and I'm, that way this will, this will be stitched with the serger first. So then once the actual fabric part of the pattern gets under the feed dogs, what I'll do is I'll remove the pin and then I can start putting some tension on the elastic uh, and not on the actual fabric. And so what will happen is as I put the tension on the elastic and it attaches to the fabric, notice how as the elastic relaxes, the fabric will be gathered. And so that is what you're gonna see as I am putting this under the sewing machine. So I'm gonna lift the presser foot and I'm gonna stick that extra tail all the way under so that the needles will catch that and form a stitch. And I'm not pulling or providing any tension. So at this point, I can now grab the tail and you'll see in a moment the, the elastic come out the back side. So I'm gonna put some tension on the elastic and anchor that and there we go. So now I have that handlebar or that tail. So I'll put some tension on my elastic. tension on the elastic. And I'm basically just teetering back and forth, putting tension on the elastic, holding, I'm not pulling back here, I'm just holding, stitching a few inches, repositioning. We're gonna do the same thing when we do around the leg opening and the neck opening and the arm opening. So it's a pretty, um, it's just a mannerism that I use, but it's a standard thing that you're gonna do in swimwear um, when you're applying elastic because your elastic will be much shorter than the, the area that you're inserting. So you'll see here at the end, and I cut a significantly longer piece, but that allows me to put some tension on the elastic all the way up to the edge. Then I can just trim that off. And so now you'll see that the elastic, if you look at that, it, and it gathers it nice and even. Let's look at it from both sides. You'll see that we have a, a very flexible stitch in there. Our uh, elastic has now gathered that band, which will now fit under the bust area. We'll clip off that original tail. And the next thing is we're gonna be able to attach this to the front of our garment. I have laid the bra shelf on the front of the pattern. Now, your pattern instructions say with right sides together, but I actually believe it should be wrong sides together. So this would be the inside of the front of our swimming suit, this being the fashion side that we'll see, the wrong side here being the lining, and then this would be the wrong side of the bra shelf facing the lining. And that is, how do we know? So that the elastic band that's in there isn't right up next to the skin. So wrong sides together on our bra shelf. Uh, it really, it's not gonna hurt anything if this is transposed, it's symmetrical left and right. But we are going to now pin this to the sides. We're gonna pin it to the neckline and we're gonna baste all the way around it. And believe it or not, we'll be ready to then join the front to the back and our swimsuit suit is really taking suit.
Now the bra shelf that is in our swimming suit is cut significantly smaller. So as I pinned that, I really did need to make sure that all the edges lined up. And as I go to sew this, I'm going to kind of apply that same technique as I did with the elastic by providing a little bit of tension so that the edges line up. And you want that bra shelf to be much smaller because that's going to help provide some compression. I want to point out that you do not stitch the bra shelf to the swimming suit in the body of the swimsuit suit because we don't want stitches showing through on the other side. Now some advanced techniques might be adding actual bra cups in here. We'll see that in our Creative 101 lesson on swimwear and there's some modifications. You can actually stitch the, uh, the bra shelf to the lining or put the the bra cups into the lining. So you have options if you didn't want a freestanding bra shelf. But for this sample and example, we are gonna utilize that. So what I'm gonna do now is baste this with the serger again, and I'm going to start on one side and go up and around to the other. And then the next step will be to join the front to the back. Well, our sweet suit is coming together. I am going to line up the side seams. So there'll be one a left and a right. The crotch seam is already connected. And then I'm going to line up the shoulder seams and I'm gonna run that through my serger. And at that point, the next step will be to use those elastic guides. And I'm gonna put elastic around the back opening, the leg opening, the neckline and the arms eye, and our swimming suit will be complete. ready to attach your elastic, don't forget that the elastic goes on the wrong side of the garment. We're going to surge basically to hold the elastic down. We're going to surge. I'm not really going to cut anything off. We might trim a scant amount if our edges happen to have been not uh, completely even. And then we'll be able to turn this over and then we can zigzag or cover stitch over the top and our swimsuit will be complete.
Now you will notice as I'm stitching this that I actually have a roll of elastic in my hand. And so what I typically do, and uh, I've just kind of trained myself is that I do that same method. I, I hold in the back and the front. I provide tension with my right hand and then uh, I'm pulling this elastic but not the fabric. And so it's just gonna feed nice through the machine, reposition. I'm kind of placing it next to the fabric surge, make sure I don't go off there as I'm talking. And then I'm just gonna pull again and I'm gonna stitch a couple inches. And you start to kind of develop your own gauge. Uh, but of course our pattern has a guide with specific lengths of elastic and you can certainly make a circle with your elastic and line up the circle with the four points on the opening and then distribute the fullness. So uh, this is just a technique you can practice, but you can again follow your pattern guide if you want to uh, attach your elastic in that fashion. And as you become more comfortable and confident in elastic, you can do it even uh, pin free like I'm doing here. Another tip with elastic is that as you're pulling the elastic and providing some tension, I will usually put a little more tension on the back of the swimwear or the leg opening because that area is really, it's cut larger, so it's gonna hug or cup the buttocks just a little bit more, whereas the front tends to be a little more flat. So that's a little trick for you as well. I'm actually going around the back side of the brief right now, and I'm actually lining my elastic up just to the inside of my basting stitching. It's not a huge amount, so I'm actually just gonna trim that off. It seems to fall really nicely in the serger. It's not gonna remove enough that it affects the fit or anything. And again, as I provide just a little more tension to the contour of the brief, that will pull that excess amount in. We're coming around to the front where we will overlap the elastic and then once I overlap I'm just going to stitch that off and the blade will then cut the elastic. Just like that and then we can trim. Remember we are going to flip this to the inside and we can get a hold of it here. All right and then we'll zigzag over top. We will zigzag from the fashion side of the fabric, but if I'm gonna do a cover stitch, I'll do the same thing. And you'll see as I let go here, that's the area that kind of cups around the back side. So without any zigzag stitch, it's just gonna kind of lay there. So being able to turn this under is really gonna provide a nice finish. And again, you can use a conventional zigzag stitch or you can use your overlock serger.
you for joining me in this fun edition of Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder. I hope you found out how easy it is to create your own custom swimwear. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you are notified anytime a new video is available. Check out these fun fabrics and many more over on nancysnotions.com and we will see you in another episode.